not the beginning. <laughs> that, <laughs> Hang on. That is the beginning. No. No. <laughs> okay. I just had to really centre myself. Hello, our little, little fucking gum, gum strap. Fucking bulky baby boo-boos. How's it going? <laughs> oh, I'm a bit, I'm heightened. I'm overstimulated. What's happened? Um, it, we, This is mates talking about stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're going to get to the stuff. We're going to get Britton. to the talking. I'm Nikki Britton. Sorry. <laughs> and that is Harley Brain keeping me Correct. on track. <laughs> Um, welcome. Jeez, welcome. you know you're in a real bad state if I'm keeping you on track. <laughs> welcome to another very professional episode of Mates Talking About Stuff. <laughs> um, the stuff we'll be talking about today is, uh, yeah, it's on It's on point. It's usual, it's regular, it's the yeah. stuff you're going to yeah. hear from us. I mean, there's a list. Who knows if we'll get to it? Oh, very unlikely, very unlikely. I, um... It's my beautiful niece's 10th birthday today. Oh, happy lovely. birthday, little Pina. Happy Pena. birthday. I love her so much. Also, happy birthday to uh, Jonathan Brown, uh, breakfast announcer. Jonathan down here in... Brown, happy yep. birthday. There you go, they also, share a birthday. Also, happy birthday to Sam Taunton, oh. friend and previous co-host of the show. Yes. Sam Taunton, happy birthday. Wow. This is just, if you guys want to write in with your birthdays, we'll just give you <laughs> a shout out. Fun fact, every day it's someone's birthday. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Every, every day. Every single day. Yeah. Um, I It's my niece's birthday. This yeah. afternoon I'm going to the island where they live yes. to go to her party. She has asked for a beanbag. Yes. Adorable. She just wants a beanbag. She's 10. She wants someone to chill. That's fine, right. baby. That's fine. So I looked on Kmart, $30 beanbag, perfect. And then because I Googled Bean bags. I got advertised at every bean bag that exists in the world. Yes, of course. On every social media platform. Even once you buy one, yes. you're forever now they'll yeah. think you need bean bags. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, I don't need your hang on a second. Because Ooh. there was this incredible company in Tasmania that has a fluffy like a like a faux fur mm. yeah. bean bag that is tie-dyed. Rainbow multicolor. Wow. They call it That's the unicorn bee bag. And yep. my sweet angel it's got a niece. Horn in it, does it? What's that? <laughs> I've got a horn in it. Oh, no, that's the. Oh my God, how good would that be? Not for my niece. I just mean <laughs> for myself. Okay. Just a little, just a little hidden I'm horn in put, your unicorn bean bag. I'm just putting Ooh. that in the bank. I'm just keeping that in the bank. Um, but this Is that beautiful. What you call it? <laughs> <laughs> the vault. I call it the vault. It's hard to it's hard to get into, but when you're in there, we can't riches, get out. <laughs> just piles of riches. Oh dear. Mm, okay. Yep. Cool. Well, um <laughs> Unicorn bean bag. Yeah, Sorry. Unicorn. I derailed you. I'm, j- I'm so yes. I got I got this bean bag. I took it out of the thing. It's got the furry, it's like fake acrylic fur. Oh yeah, yeah. But she's real sensory. She's gonna love it. But at the moment, my house, my car, everything is covered in this fur. Oh great, your I, sister's gonna love you. I'm coughing, I'm sneezing. I think I may have given her the beanbag equivalent of asbestos. Right. For her birthday. Yeah. Anyway. Good in a house fire. Oh, don't. <laughs> Holly Brain. Yes, Nikki Britton. I've got a proper real world something happened to me in the real world story. Holy shit town. Lay it on me. I'm, I know. I'm just I know. desperate for content. I know. I can't I can't even believe it's happened. Mm. Um like okay. So, 2 days ago, my beautiful mum and I Um, we go to pick up my car. You know, I I bought my new car and then I had my old car. My old car was parked near my mum's old house. She'd moved out. She'd moved to the island to be with my sis. I've only got one car space at my house, street parking very difficult. I would get a fun. So we parked the car in the residential streets near her old house. We chose a location where there was a house on the corner, like the block of land, the house was on a corner of two streets. So this particular house had at least three legal car spaces out the front of the house and then Mm -hmm. down the side of the house, which was another street, probably four and a half to five. Couldn't possibly need them all. Couldn't possibly. 
possibly need them all. Yeah. So um, we thought, okay, this is the this is the most out of the way, non cumbersome place we can possibly leave this yeah. car. We leave the car. Then Delta has her absolute fucking way. Yes. With everyone. Still going. She's still ha- she's <laughs> out there. She's still having a crack. Ripping through down here. That's, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, guys. Became oh. an actual storm last night and just pulled trees down. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't covered that. Is, did that really happen? Oh, yeah, there was a fierce storm down here overnight. Oh, it's Look, it's Armageddon down in Melbourne. Let's not even fucking dwell on it. Who gives a shit? We're free. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are. Um, so, Delta tore through, and yep. this car was parked there for about a month. Yes. Okay, sure. Long time. It's a long time. And then I went up to check on it, and the battery had died. Okay. Couldn't drive the car. Right. So I called the battery people. It was a weekend that I'd called them. They were like, oh, there's going to be a surcharge. I was like, okay, all right, I've done what I can today. I'm overwhelmed because, you know, I've... <sighs> Been out of the house for five minutes. Yeah. I'm I'm going to do that another day. Hey, look, I'm not perfect, but another month passes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Delta. 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 Also, there's no reason. Like, I've got a new car. I'm living my new car life. That old beautiful car, Honda Jazz, still available if anyone wants it for a very reasonable price. It goes like a fucking dream. Yeah. That that is that car's still staying there. Okay, that's still there. I call mum. I say, mum, I just need I need your help. There's a few. There's there was quite a bit of shit in the back of the car that I needed to just like sort out, transfer a lot of stuff that she'd moved. She had stuff in her garage of mine. You yep. know that shit. You know that life shit where yep. your parents go, we're cleaning out the spare room. You've got to come and get your shit and go, oh, no, yep. don't. Oh, so many decisions. My oh. parents said the same thing to me after years and I said, why haven't you binned that shit well, already? Would you set it on fire? That's it. Well, you almost do want someone to set it on fire because you yep. don't want to have to be met with your past and things for me, memories live in things. Some people call it hoarding. I just call it memories. <laughs> um, so, and, and anyway, it was just, there was shit and I had to sort it out. And I was like, mum, I'm overwhelmed. I need a hand. Anyway, mum and I show up. Beautiful sunny day two days ago in Sydney and we show up to the car. And then gentleman has come out of his house. Enter the now, boomer. Enter Fucking hell. the boomer. These streets, there is no timing on them. They are, they are v- like very much suburban residential streets. I did nothing illegal. There was no problem. And there's an enormous nature strip also from his fence to the road. Very big nature strip. Yeah. So mum and I are taking the stuff out of the car. We're putting it on the grass. You know, oh. we're taking it out. We're putting it on the grass. Yeah. 65-year-old boomer comes out of his house. He goes, what's all this? <laughs> I believe this is none of your fucking business. And you could tell he was charged up yeah. like a man. You know the man who fucking comes out and fucking checks on the neighbourhood bins? What oh, I you, know this what man. You, what's a bin? Yeah. What are you put the bins in? Those bins don't go there. Like, he was, he's that man. Bare butt for the grace of God go I, to be quite well, honest with you. Doubt, this is Harley Green in 30 years. <laughs> this is Harley Green in a couple of months if people don't stop fucking parking in front of my house. <laughs> Well, you would have, I mean, maybe this man had a lot more self-control than you would have had. He goes, what's all this? I said, oh, oh, this is the stuff I'm taking out of my car. (laughs) Just left it at that. He goes, been here for a while? I said, yeah, yep. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it has. He goes, did you think maybe that I would need this car park? (laughs) And I said, well, given that you've got about nine around... (laughs) The, around your, your property, uh, to be honest, no. And, and I'm not doing anything illegal here, so thank you. And he absolutely got the shits because there I was bet no, you he did. Like, he had no, he, he was gagging for a fight. Did you even think for a moment where he was going to park his caravan? Because I guarantee he's fucking got one. <laughs> he's got fucking four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he says, what well, he spins on his heel. He spins on his heel and this is like, this is a desperate attempt at 
of his toxic masculinity just, just, oh, I've got to be in control of this shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's just been sitting on this steaming pile of fury the whole lockdown. He's he's angry at Delta, but really it's all been focused on this car that's parked. You know, yeah. like the yeah. worldwide pandemic will stop if this person can move their car he's out the front of my house. He's channeled it into your like, car. Yeah, it's all yeah. there. Yeah. And I can feel it bubbling. And he spins on his heel and instead of saying anything that could, you know, satisfy, he spins on his heel and goes, bit passive aggressive. <laughs> he says that to you? Yeah. And I said, sorry? Because I was fucking done at this yeah. point. I said, sorry? He said, I said that you are being passive aggressive. And I said, sorry, sir, I think you've confused passive aggressive with assertive. <laughs> yeah. And he did not like that. No. For starters, <laughs> he said a thing and it was meant to be the last thing said. Oh, it was secondly, absolutely. you're a woman, a, a female of the right. human species. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> On so many levels, he, it, like, there was a charge that went through his spine. Just like, oh, I'm the powerful one in this. <laughs> Incredible stuff. So then he huffs into his house. Mum and I are still having a great time. Gas bag and having a giggle in the <laughs> just oh yeah, just doing and what nothing we can. will fuel up a sixty-five-year-old male boomer oh. more than women enjoying themselves. Oh, <laughs> what are you enjoying yourself how for? How dare they? How dare they? <laughs> Go back in the house. Go back in the house and have undiagnosed medical issues. <laughs> <laughs> We're not investing in your fucking research. <laughs> Okay, so he huffs off into his house. Mum and yep. I are having a great time. Then, from inside his metal gate, I hear... <laughs> and he is revving the engine of a red car that has what I assume is what? A V6, a V8? I don't understand. I sure. don't know. Like, why? Is that horsepower? Why are we still fucking measuring shit in horsepower? Yeah. Like, how Makes archaic no are you that yeah. you're like, oh, this is... Like six Clydesdales. That's what this ute is worth. Fuck yeah, off. That's a slow ute, just like, so you know. Well, I don't even. <laughs> that's exactly my point. Horsepower? Fuck off. Yeah, makes no sense. Makes no sense. Anyway, so he's revving, he's revving his engine. He comes out, he opens the gate. Mum and I are still just taking stuff out, just having a nice time. He opens the gate, he, he pulls his car around, and now there's a car parked behind my car. He pulls his car in and he parks behind the car, behind, parked behind my car. Yeah. At which point there is still another car space behind that right. before you get to the corner. So much space. Anyway, so uh, he brings his car around and he's parked there. Then the battery man comes, puts a new battery in the car. Hooray, right. hooray, a celebration. We, I, I move that car. I move my new car over so we can start piling the stuff into that car. Yeah, yeah. It's all a thing. It's a whole thing. And then um, – I had assumed, like all of that, battery man coming, unloading, loading in, I had assumed the man had left his V8 engine car where he yeah. had passive aggressively <laughs> parked it yeah. almost as a threat. A, a couple Very of Very odd behaviour seeing as it was theory. parked on his property. Yeah. And then he's brought it out for yeah. no good reason. Oh, I mean, if you want to talk passive aggression, sir, yeah. you're the fucking yeah. poster child. So anyway, I assume that he's come out of his car. And he's gone into his house. He hasn't. Harley, for 45 minutes, he sat in his car wow. watching us unload things, load things back in, talk to the battery man, sign the – put the credit card payment through the thing. And then mum – look, I know this story's taking too long. I know no. it's too – No. Point is – Yeah. Mum drives the new car away. I'm driving the old car. Yeah. But as mum pulls out of the car space – Yeah. He pulls up behind her quite aggressively. Yeah. And I see this as I'm driving the other car down the other side of the road and I thought, whoa, 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 this is hectic. I'm That's just going to crazy shit. I'm going to turn around and make sure that mum's okay here because this feels like very aggressive behaviour. I turn around and I pull up behind him. Mm. And now what he's done as an act of aggression, assertive power, mm. he has – Gone, oh, you fucking have not given me my car space for two months. I'm going to park my car. Well, I'm going to take my car out of my garage and park it in the street in that spot. Just to fucking show them that I I'm fucking I'm going to prove the point. The whole this time. is where I wanted it to be. Exactly. But at this point now, there is a car in front of the car space and a car behind the car space. <laughs> and this man, I've pulled up behind him. I can make eye contact with him in the rearview mirror. And he 
has cocked up this park like I cannot even tell you. Yes! He has driven nose first into a car park that clearly needed a reverse park. He has committed though. Because that toxic masculinity is in deep. Oh, and he's this. he's shuffling it. He's shuffling it. He's do, at this point about a 27-point turn. I've made eye contact with him. I'm hysterical. I'm hysterically oh. laughing at his failures. I am hysterically laughing in his face. And this he, is good. he's going forward. He's going back. He's going forward. He's trying to do, he's going forward. He's, he's pulling the Austin Powers. Yeah, uh, he's you know that point, like the axle of the car, the axis of the car, is there is just no way that he's ever gonna yeah. be closer than a meter and a half from the curb. He can't get it closer. He's oh. fucked it. He's cooked it completely. Anyway, then he realises this. I'm hysterical. Waving, just being a real fucking <laughs> about it. And then <laughs> Like poking the bear. I mean, I'm in a car. It's fine. It's the Honda Jazz. It fucking goes. She goes. I know. Yeah. I can outrun a V8. <laughs> anyway, he uh, he then realises he has to pull out and do a reverse park and he just thinks he's the most aggressive, like, go past me, wave. You know what I mean? Like, just go around. Just go around. Go around. <sighs> and I drove away with my heart on a cloud, just so... Just so grateful that the universe gave karma that day. You know, the universe yeah. really delivered. Fuck um, yeah. Let's go look, on Aggie's house. The universe will dis- – <laughs> the, the final caveat is that I um, I had to actually go back up to my mum's old house for a different reason later that night under the cover of darkness. And, uh, and look, I was not passive aggressive in our first interactions, but this – Possibly was. Um, because what I did was I wrote on a little post-it note, it's okay, babe, we all struggle with spatial awareness around this time. <laughs> and I put that post-it note around a tampon and I posted it in his letterbox. <laughs> and that is passive aggressive. That is. <laughs> Do you know what I love? I take accountability for that. I reckon that man doesn't even know what a tampon is. <laughs> He'll be still trying to figure out where to put that. What is this? What do you mean spatial It'll awareness? Spark, where does this fit? Is this? <laughs> uh, Nikki Britton, mm. um, as you know, there's been uh, a global pandemic that has uh, knocked a lot of shit about, knocked yes. a lot of things around. Yeah. Um, uh, and just before we crack into uh, to uh, a wonderful tradition uh, um, of, of celebration, I want to say uh, I have cause for celebration. Oh, um, excuse me, because as you know, I had a, a modicum of of issues with my vaccine passport. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And um, mm. just yesterday, I got to give it a run around. Uh, the very first day, I've I, actually had to show it. I I'm so thrilled. So this was essentially your. Your Freedom Day. It was my Freedom Day. I had a I had a moment uh, in between a couple of things, and I needed to do some writing. And um, I have always written at cafes or at bars. Wow! I, I, I really struggle I at home. I've got to be on my own, but in the world. Interesting. Um, and one of my favourite places uh, is a place where I recorded a previous podcast, um, and that is the Esplanade Hotel in oh, St Kilda. The, yeah. the great Espy. The Espy. And so I turned up there and I scanned in and I hadn't made a booking because that's sort of how you can go to the pub now. And I mm. just went, hey, is there any space? And uh, the, the lovely girl at the door, she was like, oh, yeah, I reckon if you're just staying for, you know, a, a couple of beers, I'm, I'm, yeah, I won't be here long. Um, and then she went, oh, I just need to see your vaccine passport. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got it. Didn't know how to open it, by the way. She had to tell me. Of course. Of <laughs> She's course. like, no, you just hit that one. I'm like, oh, there you go. And then she read the thing. She goes, oh, Harley Breen. I listen to your podcast all the time. Oh, <laughs> hang on, this podcast? <laughs> this one. Because oh. I said, to clarify, just because that's the venue I used to record the old one at, I said, what, with Nikki? And she went, yes. And I went, ha. Oh. well, then you'd be uh, excited to know that you're the very per- first person that <laughs> <laughs> had to look at my vaccine passport. So it was good. It was good to oh, be wow. identified as an idiot. Uh, yeah, before, out before in the even wild. ordering. Yeah. Well, hello, mate. What was her? Do you know her name? No. Okay. No. She knows mine. Didn't know hers. That's well, sure. But there's other reasons for celebration at the moment. Okay, go on. And that is uh, our our wonderful year twelve students, who've had a real fuck of a couple of years. Their entire senior oh. uh, years, yeah. eleven and twelve, ha- have have been a hard time. But there's a yeah. great tradition called muck up day. Oh yeah. Where at the end of your schooling, yep. you just 
create a bit of carnage. Yep. And it might surprise people to find out that I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, yep. I would say don't even restrict it to a day. Just sure. whenever the feeling takes you. Yeah. And and I, I thought I'd put it to you. Have Did you take part in Muck Up Day? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, what? we, we, yep. Where yeah, where'd we, you go? Did you we go into school right in S- Sydney City? Sydney City at an all girls public school. Hello. Wow. Um, Didn't even know the thing existed. They're very rare, but it, right. it was uh, it was public, baby. <laughs> it was uh, it was <laughs> real, baby. real public. <laughs> um, no, I bloody loved it. Michaela girls can do anything. It's true. It's still true. On our actual muck up day, yep. we. Dressed as babies. We all put nappies on. Okay, that makes sense. And we had dummies. And then I think there was something about some of us had turned 18 and some of us hadn't. And so we were all saying, oh, we're all underage. You can't you can't arrest us. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the thinking was. Maybe oh, it was I think just... you'll find they can. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Flawed logic. But I think, I don't know. I don't, I don't. No, I, I, I want to hope that it wasn't one of those situations where young girls are like, I'm a, just a slutty nurse. And you're like, well, you've used this you've used this dress up opportunity to just to be a bit sexy. Yeah. I hope that I don't think that was the thinking b- behind dressing as babies. Because <laughs> that's because that'd be that's not, a bit weird. Isn't that's it? not OK. By the way, every dress up party I've ever been to in the history of my life. Yeah. Doesn't matter what the theme is. Yeah. There's always a sexy school girl. Always, always. It doesn't even matter what a the theme is. Yeah, it's like, no. how the fuck is there a sexy schoolgirl here again? You know what? And that sexy schoolgirl, you you bring her over, you go, hey, babe, what is it? What are you, are you okay? Do you need attention? What <laughs> do you need? Happening? Let's, do you need connection? What is it? Because yeah. that girl is putting that outfit on because she knows she needs some sexy schoolgirl vibes <laughs> in her life. She might be 100. She's yeah. like, nope, I'm still bringing in the sexy schoolgirl because sometimes a lady just got to feel hot. And that's fine. Well, that's truth. fine. Oh, all power to you. But also, but I mean, follow the school theme. girls, not okay to be sexy. No. Don't, that's. Except to school boys. Yeah, of course, sure. Sure. Oh, we've got into one of those. It's weird. Cul de sacs. Or school girls. All school girls. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> or just I, for themselves. What Fuck. I'm saying is, <laughs> before you're 18, s- stick, to, stick to your peers. Yeah. That's all. Just within a, like a couple of age, you know, a couple of years in yeah. the age, age yeah. bracket. Yeah, you know? just, just play it safe like that. Yep. And then, yep, okay. Okay. So what we did do, though, on Muck Up Day, my friend had a very big van, an old Tarago, like an 80s Tarago. Oh, yes. And which we used to call the Venga Bus, obviously. Okay. love it. Um, and we- People um, in organised religions love those Tarragos. Yeah, yeah, she wasn't. Just had mm. a big family. Um, but we <laughs> we got some yellow cardboard and we made a New South Wales number plate that just said Venga. Great. And we, uh, two of them, and we attached them to the front and the back of this Venga bus. Over the actual number Over plate? Over the actual number plate. Oh, Having that's some. That's no some... idea how highly illegal that was. Yeah, really illegal. And then we pour, I think there was 19 of us in this van. At one point, certainly huh? we... That's another <laughs> law. <laughs> certainly we could not do a hill start. Uh, I know that for a fact. <laughs> so now we had... Now we are literally... Uh, what is it? <laughs> Breaking the law. <laughs> what is it when you... What is it? When What's you, what? When you, not a delinquent. What Juvenile is delinquent? No, but like we've gone to jail. You're naughty. You're like a felon. Criminal? Felon! Felon. So we are literally Could have been now anywhere to that point. Felons. <laughs> what? Oh my god! I've, you know, sometimes people are like, "Hey, Nikki, you tell a good story." And today, <laughs> no. Do you know what happened? You cooked yourself on the boomer. That's what happened. I cook. I've cooked. I'm cooked. You, you cooked. Oh my god, Rachel! Put all your oh energy. Oh god, Rachel, make me sound better than I am, please. I, I love this job. <laughs> okay. Oh, on our year 12 muck-up day, yeah, we dressed as babies, <laughs> which is weird. And then we fashioned a number plate for the front and back of my friend's van. I can't believe we that. What kind of van? <laughs> it's one of those old ladies' taragos. Oh, organised religions love those vans. <laughs> yeah. They just had a big family. They weren't religious. Anyway, we didn't realise how highly illegal this was. 
Should we put the number? Oh, one? they'd be a felon, wouldn't they? <laughs> Hey, here's some suggestions for your muck up day. I used to love doing this. Oh God, yep. Um, I never made it to muck up day. I dropped out of school because it's a crock of shit. But I, um, I, I grew up in Queensland, and so things were really hot. And what I'd do is just, just not even on muck up day, just any day, mm. um, when everyone was out mucking around in the, uh, in the, in the paddock. <laughs> <laughs> we went to school on a farm. Um, I would I would sneak back into the class. All the, fan, all the fans were off, and I'd crush up a whole lot of chalk mm. and um, just make piles of chalk dust on the top of the fans. Oh, you so whenever, <laughs> legend! So when everyone came back in after lunchtime, all hot and Queensland sweaty, oh. and you turn the fans on. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Pretty fun. Not good for the kid, the that chalk is, allergy. But, no, you know. no, that's no good. That's um, yeah, that's that's hard. We we yeah, just um, it was a muck up day. But once we did, uh, there was a fountain in D in E Block. You didn't go to my school. Why am I trying to flush it out for you? <laughs> I think it was. D-block. I didn't go to the all girls school. <laughs> How dare you? I could have gone. I do apologise. Um, yeah, we. Uh, it, basically, there were fish in this fountain, and one day we took the fish out humanely. Humanely. It, it was safe, but we yep. did write a ransom note, and we gave it Great. to the vice principal and said, if you ever want to see a fish again. Very good. Oh, well, we've got to the end of it, thank God. <laughs> that was another episode of Mates Talking About Stuff. I'm going to yeah. go and have a lie down and maybe a... Um, You've earned it. Yeah. I think Put on you, mate. A, bit, a few deep breaths in a Barocca, maybe. Yep. Um, what are you doing with your afternoon, Harley? Well, it uh, it is my little baby girl's birthday tomorrow, oh. so I will um, be attempting to do some very last minute shopping as the retail sure. stores open at six pm. <laughs> what? Hang on, they open at six pm? Yes, the restrictions ease enough for retail to open down here in sunny downtown Melbourne. So at um, six pm. At six pm, it's it's almost like people making decisions of fuckwits. But um, yeah, with the greatest of love and respect um, mm. to Melbourne, you, that's quite us about. Oh, that's mental. <laughs> okay. But anyway, freedom. I won't let you down, freedom. I thought you were going to do the other freedom. Oh, freedom! Gonna give you up. But happy oh, Halloween. Fuck. You fucked it. I don't know the song. Oh, stop. <laughs> you don't know George Michael's freedom. Well, I mean, I know it, but I, I can't remember that kind of shit. Okay. Well, okay. Sorry. I cut you off. What were you saying? <laughs> that sounded so passag. Uh, that time I was not being passive aggressive. <laughs> Please, as you were. Uh, uh, just uh, just uh, happy Halloween. Oh, happy Get out Halloween. There. All yeah. Hallows Eve. Yeah, go on. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's actually not an American thing originally. Oh, can I, I know we're in the outro. Just yeah. very quickly on that. Outros to people have really who go, lengthened in the oh, last it's just few. fuck it. It's so American. It's yeah. so American. You don't get to pick and choose what part of America you will uh, adhere to and what you won't adhere to. That's if you're true. typing that on an iPhone, shut the fuck up. If you've yep. got any social media, shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. If you've ever driven into any fast food joint ever anywhere, shut up. Yeah, sure. Yep. Or just shut up. Just shush. Just let people enjoy what they want to enjoy that's and fucking it. whatever. That's it. It's God. I mean, an all yeah, it was uh, it was originally a pagan festival where they were like So was Christmas. Yeah. So, um oh, oh, sweat patches. I really <laughs> get sweat patches. <laughs> okay, we gotta go. It's just a stream of consciousness today. What's wrong? Unpacked, an investigative podcast about the Britney Spears story. She radiated this energy, this dangerous kind of energy that anything could happen. Unpacked. Find it in your favourite podcast app.